Hi, I'm Donald Doherty. Thank you so much for joining me here on Engage Live. I'm excited to share with you exactly how I shoot bridal details. Over the next little while, I'm going to talk to you about my lens choice, the camera that I use, how I style the details, backgrounds, and everything else that goes into really elevating your bridal detail images so they stand out from the rest and, and will make you really stand out among your competition. So let's go. We're going to start off by shooting some wedding rings. Come with me outside. We're going to head out and I'm looking forward to uh, diving right into this workshop today. Okay, so we're outside here and uh, I'm going to start off by shooting the wedding rings. And I think that this is a, always a shot that people really, really love. And usually, to be honest, the second shooter would tend to do this image um, unless uh, because they're usually shooting with the guys and usually I would be with the bride. Uh, sometimes the bride keeps the, the rings in her house and then I'll shoot them there or otherwise um, you know we'll catch this we'll catch this later on in the day so uh, what I love to do is I love to kind of find nice kind of uh, stone and things with nice texture because uh, I know that that's going to look fantastic and just outside here I mean this doesn't really look like much behind here but the stone has got really really nice texture in it which I know will look amazing when we shoot that uh, with a wide aperture so let's talk about gear before we start shooting. Uh, I'm shooting with a 5D Mark III. Uh, the lens that I have here is the Canon Macro Lens 100mm 2.8L. Um, and this is actually the IS version as well. So you can actually uh, click in, turn your stabilizer on, your autofocus, um, and then you have like three different um, options there for how kind of far uh, you are away from it, okay? So I'm gonna set these up and uh, start talking to you guys a little bit more about the best ways to kind of set these up for success. Okay, so we've got the rings and I want to show you how to position them to make them look amazing. So we found this nice kind of stone here, this concrete, which we know is going to look pretty cool. So I'm going to set these down. And so here's a few things to think about, okay? Um, I personally think that it looks better when the, the rings are just kind of touching, or what I like to say is they're just kissing. So they're just touching in the middle ever so slightly. Uh, so you see here like that. Now I've seen some second shooters where they'll kind of overlap it. And to me, it doesn't, it definitely doesn't, doesn't look as good as just having it just kind of kissing each other like that. Now, here's another thing as well. We have uh, the bride's ring here, which has uh, diamonds. Uh, along the front so you'll definitely want to have the diamonds pointing towards you so make sure that um, just just make sure that you don't have the side without the diamonds on it because obviously that's what diamonds are a girl's best friend and that's what everybody kind of wants to see right okay so we have them positioned there um, in regards to settings here I always shoot more or less uh, probably 70% of the time in aperture priority so I'm still in aperture priority right now um, I'm just going to start off just do a test shot uh, I'm shooting wide so this lens is um, f2.8 and I've just got 100 ISO uh, so I'll just take this shot uh, kind of as a test and then I'll show you guys what I'm what I'm doing okay okay so great okay cool that looks pretty good already so um, I just got that shot, I'm pretty happy with that, and I'll probably just do a couple of different uh, different options. Now, usually what I think looks quite good when you're shooting um, the rings as well, is give the camera a little bit of a turn as well, because it makes the, it just makes it look a little bit more kind of interesting in the frame. So let's get this, cool. And I'll kind of go down nice and low here, just get something else. Awesome, cool. Okay, um, another thing to think about as well, uh, sometimes with rings they have them inscribed in the middle so they'll have like the couple's names um, and it can be kind of a nice alternative shot as well to kind of zoom in and get the couple's name and not just kind of the front of the rings if you're intending to do that make sure that you've got for example uh, Lee and over on this side and then you've got Maria on this side and you can actually see their names actually on the rings because if not um, what I have seen recently was I got images back from a second shooter and we had the girl's name on one ring and another other ring it was actually the date, the date but if they would have moved it around they would have got the couple's names and that, that would have looked way way nicer as well. Um, now I do have the engagement ring here as well and sometimes you may decide that you want to also incorporate that as well. So what we can do here is I'm just going to set that very very gently just on top of these rings and by the way just kind of FYI probably not a good idea to leave these in a place that is pretty dangerous uh, i have been known to kind of position rings on the end of um for example kind of like banisters and things like that with a major drop at the other side 
well that would be a huge nightmare if you lose a ring right before the wedding day you're going to ruin that bride's day so just be careful okay so i have focused on recom or sorry i'm not focusing recomposing here i'm actually changing the focal point um but i think with this lens usually in the middle um it's usually pretty good you know in terms of the the look uh of it so usually i tend to leave it kind of in the middle for this Awesome, cool. So there's another another kind of an idea or a different way to do it. Um, the other thing you can do as well, which works kind of cool, is you can move these rings around and kind of position them so that the uh, engagement ring is kind of pointed up like this. So you set one of the rings down on the bottom, kind of balance them together. Let's see if we can make this work. It doesn't always happen. It kind of depends on what size the, the rings are, right? Okay, cool. And we've created a, something really kind of interesting looking there. So. Let's get in and let's have a little look at that. So this can look really good shooting it from above. Again, this time I'll probably move my focal point. I'll, I'll move this over to you know, the right of the image, image and let's have a look. Cool, that looks pretty good. All right, great, so there's a series of shots. I wanna change our background just so we have something which looks completely different from this. Um, I've gotta say I'm not a huge fan of like hanging, um, hanging these kind of off branches and things like that for me. I'm not sure if I, I, I kind of personally like the style of that, uh, but what I will do is sometimes I'll find something nice like this and then maybe find something kind of wooden or um, something with a bit of texture. So let's go, let's find another background. We'll just do another series of shots with these just so we have a couple of different options. Hi, so I find this table here out the back, which, which has a great kind of texture to it. It looks, looks amazing and I know uh, when we start shooting it's going to look pretty cool now what i did was i positioned the uh the rings here on the table and i just wanted to have a kind of a more kind of straight on kind of shot with this one so um obviously you can get down and look through the viewfinder but uh, what i've done is um obviously in the 5d mark three here i put it in the live view so we can see actually the rings there so i made sure i will make sure that these are are completely sharp uh by zooming in so let me just do that real quick perfect so we can see that that the rings look really, really sharp here. And then when I'm ready, I can just take my shot, right? So um, that's that. So let's try one more to make sure we got it. Let's have a little look at that. Yeah, that looks cool. So then what I'll do is I'll come up a little bit higher. I'm just gonna get a kind of a higher, turn off live view. Uh, I'm gonna get a higher uh, perspective on it here. I know that's gonna look pretty cool. So let's kind of turn the camera around a little bit and get that awesome so we've got a couple of really really nice shots here in the bag it only takes a second to do it um so it's definitely worth it investing in a macro lens is going to help you a lot because if you have something like the 24 to 70 it's really really hard to get in nice and close to actually focus with that lens so that's a look at the rings let's go up to the bedroom we're going to start shooting uh the dress the shoes and all the other bits and pieces so uh let's rock and roll Okay, so I'm up in the bedroom here and usually when I'm shooting bridal details in the morning and, and kind of preparing for the day, I'll usually actually let the, the bride know that it's great if I can shoot in a room that's kind of relatively tidy. Um, and also just mention to her that it's great if you have somewhere with lots of natural light as well. So people usually go to a bit of an effort if you give them an opportunity to kind of prep them and, and let them understand that that's what you need to do to get uh, really great shots of the details. I personally like shooting in bedrooms because um, it's kind of nice because you're kind of out of the way from everything that's going on on the wedding day. Uh, previously or a number of times before, I've actually shot where they've set me up in the place where everybody else is getting ready and it can be really, really manic. And for me, I love to shoot details. I love to take my time and, you know, just get, get the details and, and do a great job of that, but just to kind of have a little bit of peace and quiet to kind of do it. Um, so I definitely love coming up to, uh, to a bedroom to have that. So uh, here we see here we've got um, a nice kind of cover on the on the duvet here which is going to work as a as a great background for what we're doing and um, the cool thing is as well this is actually gold and the theme of the the wedding uh, is actually gold so that's going to work uh, work great actually for the images um, and also we've got this one as well which looks great there's a really nice shine to this one as well so what i want to start with uh, right now is the bouquet and here's a little bouquet that we have um, so i'm going to show you how i shoot bouquets um, I will also take this outside later on just to get a couple of shots to kind of show you uh, an alternative of what I would usually do because I do usually take outside to get a couple of shots also. So usually I love to get a little shot. I'll just set it kind of on its side like this. Um, and so at the moment I do have the macro lens on um, and uh, the reason that I've got that on right now is because I'm going to do another shot and get a shot of the engagement ring. And this is the shot that I always do in the morning of the wedding and one that the bride and groom always choose to have in their album. They just absolutely love it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position 
uh, the ring into into the flower here. So let me see. Okay. I'm not sure if this is actually a real bouquet or not, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think I've I've lost it there. Let's find a little uh, a little flower that this is this is gonna work in. So we've got this little one right here. Okay. Obviously you have to be a little bit gentle as well. You don't want to kind of wreck anything. But uh, it's just about getting it kind of positioned nicely in, in the flower like that. So we've got our uh, engagement ring uh, in position. Uh, and now we're going to shoot a really nice kind of macro shot with that. So again, I'm going to shoot this wide open. I'm going to throw it into aperture priority. So 2.8. Obviously I'm inside here, so I may bump the ISO up. So for now I'm going to put that in up to 400 uh, and I'm going to see what I can get here, okay? So, okay, let's have a little look. Okay, that looks pretty nice. Cool, I'm just going to uh, turn up my exposure compensation. Uh, let's do that real quick. And I'll bracket a few shots because I just want to make sure I'm getting something that looks really nice and light and bright and airy. Okay, let's get one more. Move out of the way here a little bit. Okay, cool. Actually, that's still a little bit, a little bit bright. So I'm gonna bump my ISO again. Okay. Cool. So that's pretty much the perfect shot. And the cool thing is, you can always zoom in to the image as well, just to make sure that it's tack sharp. Um, that's that's really really important. Also. Um, it can be nice as well to get in a little bit closer and get a really, really tight shot. And in order to do that, I found you're probably better to turn off um, turn off the autofocus and go into manual focus. I'd also turn off uh, this here little thing here uh, to the kind of minimum focusing distance. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to just uh, find the focus where we're at here and see how close I can get. Okay, cool. Got it there. Cool. You want to just make sure that that, uh, that that ring is completely, completely sharp as well. So still shooting this ring, but something I just realized there now was that uh, what I tend to do quite a lot is I'll hold my breath when I'm taking the shot, especially if I'm, if I'm not using autofocus. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go in here and I'll get my shot in focus and then I'll just take a big breath. Uh, and I'll just get my shot. And that, that's just a brilliant way, actually, of uh, just making sure you get your shot. Do you know what happens sometimes, though? Sometimes I forget that I'm actually, like, holding my breath. And then I'll realize, like, I haven't, like, taken a breath in ages. And then I'll be like, <gasps> So it's important to make sure that you're, uh, that you're breathing as well. The last thing you want to be doing is, is fainting on a wedding day. Um, okay, cool. So that is um, how to get a really nice shot of the, uh, of the ring in the bouquet. Okay, so now we're going to shoot the bouquet on its own and as I mentioned, we will do that outside in a sec as well. So I'm just going to kind of position it a little bit sideways. I'm going to change lens. I'm going to put on the 50mm 1.2. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll probably shoot this at uh, f2. Uh, so let's do that real quick. And I'm just going to have 200 ISO. Let's just kind of try that out and see where we, we get with it. Um, one thing I think is important if you're kind of shooting it like this, kind of side on, it's not a bad idea to kind of possibly turn it around a little bit, uh, just so you can see kind of the, the little end kind of bit there of it. Okay, let's have a look. Cool. Cool. I'm just going to take that a little bit, a uh, little bit brighter. So I'm just going to move my exposure compensation up a little bit. I'm getting a bit of this in, so I might just move that over a touch. Okay. And I'm going to continue to move it around a little bit so I can make sure I get the whole thing in. Perfect, great. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Let's get one more. Okay, so what I would also do with this now, now that I've done that is, I love getting the shot with it kind of propped up a little bit. So I'm gonna move and I'll just kind of set it, I'll just kind of set it up here so it's, it's kind of straight up. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little shot of the bouquet standing up. And right here, they've got this really nice little uh, table beside the bed. Now, the thing is, that what I really want to impress onto you is don't be afraid to move things around. So obviously, uh, it would be great to kind of maybe set this up against the wallpaper. So I'm going to just move that lamp out of the way. I'll move this uh, over a little bit. And I'm going to set the, uh, set the bouquet right here. Okay, uh, let's do that real quick. Cool. So sometimes these can be a little bit awkward to get kind of set, but 
you have to kind of try, try it out a little bit and find a little spot that's going to kind of work for you. Okay, so set my bouquet up here. Um, you guys didn't see the little bit earlier on where it took me about uh, five minutes to try and get this to stand up, but we made it work. Um, so I'm going to get a little shot of it here standing up as well, which can look great. So again, I'm just shooting wide open. I, I love kind of shooting at kind of F2. Uh, that looks awesome. It looks so good. Cool. And you know, I'm just going to stand up and get a little bit of a different angle on it as well. Okay. Cool. Perfect. Great, so we've got a brilliant shot there of it sitting down, standing up. If we have time on the wedding morning, I usually will take that outside and also get a shot of it outside as well. So let's get into uh, shooting the bridal shoes and that's one of my favorite things to uh, photograph uh, during the day. And you know what? We're not gonna make it complicated and the reason that we're doing that is when it comes to designing this wedding album and setting everything out in the album, you don't want lots of like different backgrounds because it's going to be really hard to make it look consistent when it goes into the album so think about using the same backgrounds whether it is uh, something like this you know like the duvet cover and i'm going to give you another couple of ideas in a second of other backgrounds that you can use to shoot uh, the details with as well okay so one of my favorite things to shoot on the wedding morning are the shoes and uh, this is a little pair of jimmy shoes that i bought my wife uh, for our wedding day uh, so we're going to start off by uh, by shooting these. So obviously with it being Jimmy Choo or any sort of brand like that, you're going to make sure you definitely want to have that, that brand included. Okay, so uh, again, I'm just going to shoot this at, uh, at F2, uh, my aperture priority mode, and I'm just going to get a shot of the, uh, of the shoes. Now, the thing is, I don't always sit down when I'm doing this, but I'm just sitting down for a little sec. I'm going to stand up right now. Hold on a sec. Let's just get that shot of the box. Okay, so obviously don't be afraid to move around as well. So for me at the moment, the light, it wouldn't be great there. So let's try that out. Okay, awesome. Cool. So let's open up the Jimmy Choo's. Let's see what's inside. And we'll very kind of carefully unpack this and kind of see what's happening here. Okay, cool. So here we are. So sometimes I think it can be... Um, it can be really nice to get a shot of the of the shoes just kind of in the box like this, like rather rather than you know not taking them out. So, I'm just going to get a little shot one in the box. Okay, cool. Awesome. That was a little bit hot. Just turn on my exposure compensation. Cool. Okay, and then let's get these out. Okay, so we can set aside the box right now. We'll put those back in in a moment when we're done. So through the box there and let's set these up so um obviously this these are not currently done so you know get in there and do the shoes up um if you're a male photographer i don't know if this is uh if this is exactly right for everybody but sometimes it's really good to kind of know brands that uh, the women love so um you know things like jimmy Choo and luxury brands like that it's really important to know why that would be something important or for example, if you're shooting uh, Louboutin shoes, it's really important that, um, that you shoot the sole because they've got a red sole and that's how you know that they're uh, Louboutins. So if you're shooting those Lubies or Jimmy Choo's, you gotta make sure that you, you know about this sort of stuff because it's gonna really, really help you with your client. Okay, so that's one of those done up. Let's get the other one. It can be kind of relaxing shooting details actually. I kind of like it because um, it's pretty chill. It's before everything kind of kicks off on the wedding day. So I kind of like that atmosphere. Other things that you may want to be shooting as well. So like you got like the perfume and things like that as well. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the paper goods in a moment and some other bits and pieces also. Okay, we're almost, uh, almost there. Okay. So these are great as well, and they're really, really kind of high shoes and everything also, and they're going to look fantastic with this, um, with the duvet cover as well. Something to think about as well, if you're prepping people before the wedding and they're going to put those little gel things inside the shoes, it's a really, really good idea to make sure that they don't put those in until you get your shot. Okay, so I'm just going to set these up like so, and I'm going to get a little shot of them to begin with. So just kind of a straight on shot, something uh, pretty simple, nothing too kind of complicated. So let's get that. Just going to move my focal point to kind of the front almost of the shoe. And let's see that. Perfect. I'm just going to get one this way. Great. Cool. 
And you guys will see these on screen anyway, as they as I should. So it'll give you a bit of an idea of uh, of what I'm getting each time. So yeah, I'll just get a nice little kind of side shot here. And again, I don't really sit sit down when I'm doing this normally, but if there's a little seat handy, it can kind of be good because I think getting that low angle can be can be kind of nice. So here's the thing as well, uh, if it is a pair of Jimmy Choo's or Louboutins, I'm making sure that I get this in because it's, it's kind of important also. Make sure that things are sitting right as well. So don't be afraid to kind of get in there and, and style what you're doing as well. So I'm going to come up here, just get a kind of a higher angle on the shoes. Okay, cool. Okay, just get a little in this way. Awesome. Uh, do you know what, I might just get a little shot of the toes. So let's uh, kind of move them around this way. Obviously I'm lucky here because I've got a huge big window here which is giving me lots of natural light which is just perfect for shooting these. So let's get a little shot with the shoes, with the toes. So I'm just going to turn this down to 1.2 for a sec and just get a higher one like this. Cool. Okay, so the way that I that I usually work is that I, I love to get like the standard kind of shot which is like the shot that everybody kind of expects and then I try to look for something different so something that's going to be kind of unique to the couple so something that they are going to have which which looks different to everything that they, they're kind of usually seeing so you got the safe shot and let's do something a little bit different so i'm going to move these shoes and put them on top of the bed here and just create kind of a nice little shot and uh, so check this out okay so we've got our shoes set up here so it's kind of a different uh, different type of shot here um, so we're going to get down uh, we've got them positioned up there. It looks really, really nice. And yeah, we'll just show something kind of different. So we've got something different from the average kind of standard kind of shoe shot. And that, that looks pretty cool, actually. So that's another shot in the bag and time to move on to the next detail. Okay, so we got some more details here. We got a little box. Um, I believe it's the headpiece in here. So I'm just going to get a shot of the box again, just on the, on the blanket again here. So let me just do that. So again, this time we're going to be shooting at F2 again. And zoom in there. And you know what? See if the blanket is kind of crumpled. Don't be afraid to kind of get in there and kind of smooth it out and make sure it looks amazing. Okay, let's have a little look at that. So I'm going to move out a little bit so I'm not in my light. And I'm going to get a shot at f1.2. Also, I'm just going to use my exposure comp to kind of move that up a little second. That looks great. And just change the aperture again back up. Cool. Okay, so let's open this little box. Let's see what's inside. So I tend to believe that it's nice to kind of. Um, get a shot with the box as well. So sometimes the boxes can be amazing. So there's all kinds of little treasures in here. So let's get a little shot of those inside the box. Um, yeah, that looks great actually. So just put this back up to F2. Awesome. So we can take these out and we can, we'll leave these and, and have a kind of a look at them. Um, I believe this is the hair piece and this is for the rest and that's the choker. Okay, so let's uh, put this out of the out of the way here, and we can do we can do this. So you know what, we've got like other pillows and stuff as well. So like, don't be afraid to grab, you know, grab something else. So maybe we can kind of shoot this uh, little wristband on here. So we'll keep this for a sec. Great. So we're gonna get a shot with the fifty, and also you got I've got the hundred mil near me here as well. So we can always use the hundred mil uh, if I need to do that again. Here I'm shooting at 2.8. I'm going to put this up to 400 ISO just to make sure I've got loads and loads of light. Come back a little bit. Awesome. And then make sure to kind of vary your, vary your height and where you where you're coming from. Uh, we've got these other bits and pieces as well, so we can kind of lay these out and create something kind of nice. So you may decide to shoot these individually, or you may decide to do these as kind of a one-off piece. Sometimes just kind of actually capturing the detail is nicer than anything else. And uh, let's get that. Cool. Okay, so that's the shot. And let's put these uh, back in the box. Now the thing is, when you're shooting details, you know, you don't want to spend all day doing it either. So you need to be expedient when you're when you're kind of working. Uh, so don't be afraid. If you get a shot that looks amazing, you need to continue to shoot your details there. Um, the next thing that we're going to work on is uh, shooting the paper goods. And this is actually the paper goods from my wedding. So included here, we have an order of service. We have an invite uh, that you can kind of open up and there's a little slip and things like that, which looks great. Um, we also had this little card, which kind of it was the timeline of the day and told everybody everything that was happening throughout the day. Um, and then we've got really, really nice 
um, envelopes as well. So we put a lot of effort into the paper goods. And so I do ask uh, our couples if they want us to shoot the paper goods, make sure to kind of have them there for us on the day. So what I'll do is I'll kind of uh, set these out, maybe do kind of like a little grid and kind of set them up like this. And we do a little shot, that looks kind of nice. Cool, so again here, I'm just gonna put on my 50 again this time. So something to think about here in regards to this, um, if you are shooting, you wanna definitely make sure that you're not always shooting wide because people are gonna to want to actually see what's written on the cards. So I am gonna do a kind of a wide open shot first of all, and then what I'll do is I'll, Let's have a little look at that. That looks pretty cool. Just turn my exposure compensation up a little. Awesome, cool. And then I'll turn uh, turn this right up. Let's see, we'll go to uh, F8. Just turn my ISO up a little bit as well to accommodate for that. Uh, and that looks awesome. Cool, so I'm gonna come here just a little bit higher up. So we're kind of shooting in a different way. Be careful as well not to stand in your own light. So that's what, kind of what I was doing right there. But. Okay, cool. So we've got some amazing, amazing shots of the paper goods, um, but also want to just maybe get uh, individual shots of each of the bits and pieces as well. So again, what you could do, obviously you could use uh, a pillow or uh, again, this actually stands up on its own. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get even down lower, going to get lower, lower, lower today. This is like, uh, this is like doing the remember the name of that thing <laughs> maybe these guys behind the scenes can remember uh, let's just check it out okay okay so uh, change up my settings here so the thing is you want to be high enough so that you're using the blanket as the background and you're not actually um, you're not actually kind of seeing the wall and stuff like that so if it's possible to get kind of high enough to do that I think that's a really good that's gonna look really good okay cool so we got something pretty awesome there. Cool. And it's kind of nice because this is a, actually with the kind of gold that's kind of included here. It looks it looks brilliant. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a turn. So we got one with the with the gold and one not so much with it reflecting, just so there's a couple of different kind of options here. Okay. Let's have a little look at that. That looks pretty awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so I wanna show you guys a really, really easy tip and trick that you can use. If you turn up on a wedding day and the location that you're shooting in is, is maybe not optimum, you don't have a nice background and you just need something that's gonna look consistent uh, and it's gonna look great for the images. So what I tend to do is I'll grab one of the bridesmaids dresses like this one and I'll create my own infinity curve. So what I can do is just grab a pillow or something like that uh, and let's just kind of set that on there. Cool, and spread out the dress a little bit. Okay, cool. So we've actually created our own little infinity curve here. So let's jump in here. And obviously this is the color of the wedding as well. And something that we're always trying to do is to make sure that we're kind of shooting uh, to the color of, uh, of that wedding. And it creates a really amazing story for the day. So right now, just gonna get a little shot of this. I'll show you guys. Cool. Cool, I'll just get one with the uh, 100 mil macro as well. So let's get that on. Now we'll get something kind of interesting here. And we'll get one more. Cool. So uh, what I tend to do is I'll get the safe shot, but then I'll also get uh, this actual, the, the shot of it here. So you can actually use that to shoot all of the details. So you can just have all your details here and just work away using the uh, bridesmaid's dress as kind of an infinity curve. Um, also what I'll do is just when I'm here, I'm just gonna shoot a kind of a safe shot of this as well because we we're kind of shooting all of our details here just so everything kind of matches so let me do that real quick cool so and there's a really really nice safe shot as well cool perfect so that's just a brilliant way to shoot jewelry or paper goods or anything else that you might want to shoot so let's get on to shooting the dresses okay so we're moving on now to the bridesmaid's dress and then we'll do the bride's dress before you ever do this okay this is really 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 important go and wash your hands it's the very first thing that i do when i arrive in the bride's house um, because believe me uh, the last thing you want to be doing if you're on your way to the wedding and eating a sausage roll or something like that is going in and pitting your, your fingers if they're going to be dirty on the dress okay so just make sure you really thoroughly clean your hands uh, before you get going on 
Okay, so we've got a bridesmaid's dress here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I managed to kind of straighten it up a little bit in the hanger and make sure that it looks uh, really, really beautiful. There's gorgeous detail in the dress. So what we'll do is, uh, after we get a wide shot, um, we'll come in and we'll shoot some of these details as well, make sure that we really capture it um, in the best way. Okay, so let's get a wide shot. Um, again, I've got my 50 on here. I very often use a 24 to 70 as well. Because we're using this uh, beautiful mirror here, I can see some different reflections. And at the moment I can see the television on the wall. So if I, all I have to do is move a couple of steps and throw this out of the way. Uh, all I have to do is move a couple of steps and then I can see the dress perfectly and I can't see any of the TV or anything like that. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so again, I'm shooting here at uh, F2. Cool, that looks amazing. So we'll go and we'll get a couple more kind of wider shots like that, just use a different, a slightly different angle. And I'm really happy. I'm just focusing and recomposing when I'm doing that. Okay, let's stick on the 100mm macro. And let's get in a little bit closer. I'm gonna come in here and shoot a little bit of detail here in the dress. Now, one thing to think about, if you are shooting the dress and again you've got a mirror, if you're lucky enough to be slim enough, uh, you can hide in behind the in behind the dress or whatever it may be that you're shooting, uh, and then you'll not be in the in the shot. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to get something really really close here. Awesome. I'm going to throw the 50 back on again also, and I just want to get a really nice shot along the top because the detail in this dress is absolutely gorgeous. So I'll get myself in here, focus on there on the side, get my shot. And also a lot of times what you find is that bridesmaids or brides will have got really nice bridal hangers for the bride, uh, for the bridesmaids and they'll have the, the girls names on there. So if they've done that, make sure that you're, you're getting the names of each of the bridesmaids. So I'll shoot each dress on its own and then I'll maybe do a shot across that kind of shows the three dresses. And often these will be positioned either at the window or on a kind of wardrobe. Uh, but don't be afraid to move them if you need to move them as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna get one last shot of these. Cool, and I think uh, I think the bride's gonna be very, very happy with the with the shots there. So here we are with the wedding dress. Um, this is actually a dress that we've had in the office for about a year. I think it's uh, it was Tom's sister bought it for a shoot and we've had it. So just a good uh, good dress to show you for an, for an example. Um, we've got it here hanging up on a hanger. I've instructed the bride to get a nice hanger for it as well. One thing you want to watch, a lot of times I come to houses where the dress is kind of sitting like this. You know, just put your, put your fingers in the bust and pull it out here because you want it to kind of sit out in, the, in a nice way. So we're going to get a full length shot of the dress. I'm going to move back over here again. Again, like I said, with the last one, I'll probably have a 24 to 70, uh, or I would have a, I've got the 50 on here. Now I can actually see the TV here because this, this dress is not kind of hiding it. So I'm going to get down pretty low here so I can hide the TV in the reflection. And let's get a little look at that. That looks pretty good. I'm getting a little, little bit of flare of the window, but it looks all right, you know. Let's see if I can block it out a little. Okay. And yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty decent one. Okay, so I'm gonna throw on my 100mm macro, same as what I did last time. And I'm gonna move in and get some details of this dress. So let me just make sure that I'm not gonna be in the shot here, which is kind of important. Cool. And just a couple more of these for now. Cool. Um, so the thing is as well, You'll probably want to get a shot of the back of the dress as well, and that's that's also important. So make sure to turn it around and get a shot of the back. If it's got a big, uh, if it's big at the bottom, make sure to kind of spread it out and, and make sure it looks great, uh, and get a shot of that as well. So let's just capture one of the back. Now a bit of a tip here: if you turn it around to the back and you can see the the cups, you don't want to see you don't want to see those in the shot. So if if I was in that circumstance, I wouldn't take a shot of the back of the dress. You can always get in and shoot a little bit of detail, but it's probably not gonna look great for the, for the image. Okay, I'm gonna get down low again to block out the TV like last time. And cool, we got our shot. Cool, that looks great. I'm gonna do one more thing with the bridal dress, okay? So we've got this mirror. Maybe we can use this to get a reflection of the dress. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over and I'm gonna set the dress over here. And we can hang it right there on the door. 
Okay, awesome. So let's see if I can get a little bit of an angle here on the dress. So I'll move around. Okay, I'm gonna to need to be probably in here. Okay, so if I can just use this mirror now to get a kind of a little bit creative. Hide myself a little bit so I don't wanna be, be in the shot. Okay, that looks kind of cool. And let's get another couple of shots here. Okay. Yeah, that looks nice. So we've got a couple of different options and then when it's up there, you might as well get a shot of the dress when it's hanging up there as well. Cool, that looks great. If the bride allows you to, it's amazing when they allow you to take the dress outside and I, I personally love that. Again, just be careful with kind of everything because you want to make sure that you don't get, get the dress dirty or anything like that as well. Okay guys, so I think that's almost us. Um, I did promise you I was going to take the bouquet outside and just get a little shot of that outside so that you can see uh, the bouquet in natural light as well. But apart from that, you may have to shoot things like the jewel, more of the jewellery. You may have to shoot the perfume and other bits and pieces. But using this strategy, using the same background, which is neutral, which uh, matches with the theme of the wedding, it's really going to help you make this look very, very consistent in the wedding, uh, in the wedding album when it comes to the end of the process. Thank you so much for joining me for this insight into how I shoot bridal details. I hope you find it incredibly interesting and you're inspired and motivated to go out there and create some amazing images for your clients. If you'd like to watch this content again or you missed anything at all, you can of course purchase the class and we, we'd really appreciate if you do that and continue to support us here at Engage Live and everything that we do. Um, of course, we've got our, our engagers group on Facebook. Make sure to join, just request, and we'll uh, add you in once we see that you're a photographer. And there's a great community in there of people learning and sharing and growing together. Uh, and of course, you can ask lots of questions about this class if you have anything, and anything else, of course, as well. We've also got a range of wedding classes here from Richie P. Walton's Wedding and Portrait uh, Workshop, which is a three-day epic, uh, which will really help you to get images which, which are really stunning. There's loads of business classes as well. We talk about, you know, not only how to get your website right, but also like a wedding day walkthrough. So I talk you through every single shot that I shoot on a wedding and it's an incredible compliment to this class. Well, go out there, create, and we're excited to see what you guys are, uh, are all doing out there and make sure to share your incredible bridal detail shots with us. And we'll see you back here soon on Engage Live.